So hey guys, welcome back to Amesy's Corner. How you all doing out there? So uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the day after the day after Christmas. Um, I apologize to all you people who anticipated the live feed of getting this car together uh, the day after Christmas. The trouble was is um, is it's a lot of work to do this kind of job, and it's a lot of work to produce the video. And something I didn't anticipate, it's an awful lot of work to talk pretty much consistently straight through six and a half hours at a volume level where you guys could hear it. If you notice, that whole video is kind of talking loud. I, uh, I hurt myself. I, uh, I, over, I overworked myself. Even today, um, I'm having a little trouble with my diaphragm talking. It's just like when you, uh, when you go jogging for the first time in a long time where you push yourself lifting weights, um, you know, push harder than you ever have in your life, you kind of, you feel things you didn't know you had, you know, pains in places you didn't know you had. I think I, uh, I overworked my diaphragm a little bit. It's actually, I can feel it today, like I was saying. Um, yeah, that and, uh, and the old lady, she kind of had the same thing where she was reading off the, uh, the comments all day. She just, uh, between how I felt yesterday and how she felt, we decided to just, uh, to just relax and enjoy the uh, the Christmas holiday, uh, we actually went out kayaking, kayaking the day after Christmas up here in New England. It was like 60 something degrees. Um, I actually think I got a little bit of a sunburn, but hey, I, I needed it. I deserved it. So yeah, sorry you guys if uh, you guys wanted to see a live feed of this, and uh, she didn't want to come. She was still feeling a little under the weather, so I I don't have anybody here today to read the comments. So I think what I'm going to do is just give you guys a little. Uh, a little update every few minutes as I go around and, and get this thing together. Um, probably the first thing I have to deal with today, uh, if you guys remember in the live feed, we had some trouble with the alternator. This, uh, this Allen bolt hole, you guys can see it, is now a perfect circle. So I had to, you know, pivot the alternator back. It, uh, the bracket didn't appreciate that much, but I think well, we'll anyways, be okay. Anyways, guys, it's uh, a little past eight in the morning. I don't want to be here all day, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get to putting this thing together. And uh, if I run into any trouble, I'll, uh, I'll run you guys through and what we find. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be driving this thing home before lunchtime. So let's get to work. That, uh, Alternator dealt with. Got the bracket back into position. Got the belt on it. Everything's looking Something good. I noticed, but I didn't really point it out. The uh, yeah, this this motor mount's pretty chazzled. Um, I knew it was when I took it apart. I didn't know until I took it apart. But being that was Christmas Day, um, you know, I couldn't get any parts. So uh, I might have to put that together with uh, with that blown out mount and then just change it in the future you know in, in the next week sometime it's not really a hard mount to change but i figure uh why don't we uh you know it's sunday christmas uh vacation weekend why don't we see if we can actually get some parts they're open Hey Fernando, it's Amesy up at Approved. Hello. Hey, how's you doing today? Uh, pretty good. What can we do for you, man? Hey, I got a 2001 Saab 95 wagon, 2.3 high output. Okay. I'm looking for a uh, passenger side motor mount, the one that goes up against the timing covers. Mm -hmm. Automatic or manual? <laughs> Automatic. Don't tell me front or rear driver's side. I'm guessing it might be the front that you're looking for. Maybe. What's it? Uh, you got a picture of it? Yeah. It has a like a square um, one end and then around the other. Uh, it looks like it's put on, put through the. Uh, got like two two bolts on the bottom. One one stud on top. Like two bolt holes on the mount. One stud hole on top. Look like. What's the uh, what's the part number? I'll look it up and take a look for myself. Nine two nine two. Nine two nine two. Is there anybody there delivering, or would I have to come up and grab it if you got it? Um, Is Rob around? Yeah, he's here. Uh, he looks like he's walking through the store, so I'm guessing he's on the clock. So yeah. All right, man. Let me uh, let me look this up. I'll order it online and uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Right there. 
is definitely not the mount I'm looking for. So yeah, looks like I'm not going to be able to get this mount today. It looks like AutoZone can't get it at all. Um, I have a foreign auto parts supplier that I'll have to get that to. So we'll have to do that. Maybe we'll do the uh, we'll do the motor mount, a live quick show next weekend or something. We'll do a nice little live show. Maybe we'll do a quick motor mount on this and we'll do the walk around on the Sonnet you guys wanted. Well, anyways, guys, that's enough messing around with the computer and parts I can't get today. I got to... Uh, Got about 9.15, and I gotta, I gotta get cranking because I want to be out of here. So, all right, everyone, Let's I'm just going. plugging away, making some great progress. Uh, I got some great progress here. Um, pretty much all the vacuum stuff's put on. The only thing that broke on me, and it's not a huge deal, is uh, this uh, vacuum fitting. This goes to the vacuum pump, goes to the power brake booster, and goes to the manifold. What this does is it allows at low RPMs the uh, the manifold makes more vacuum than the vacuum pump. And with this one-way valve, it uh, it just charges up the power brakes with that. So uh, I'm going to have to get a new uh, repair piece. I, th I think I can get those, but just not today. So what I think I'll do today is I'll just block this off. Uh, I probably won't have to block this off because it's a one-way valve. Um, it won't leak vacuum, I don't believe. So, uh, yeah, I'll just plug that up and then go to the Duke of Saab. And he's probably got a piece I can take off of one of his donor vehicles. So we'll take care of that. But uh, yeah, I got the coolant system all closed up. A couple new hose clamps here and there and take care and stuff. So I figured this would be a good time to show you guys the, uh, the airlift here. Um, now this is a tool. If you're, uh, if you're working on cars for a living, if you're messing with coolant systems even one a week or two a week or you know up to ten a week depending on you know, how busy you are, this is a tool you need to have. Now what this tool does is it vacuums the uh, the whole coolant system right now we have no coolant in this engine we drained it all and with everything we took apart there's a lot of rubber hoses there's a lot of uh, fittings and uh, banjo bolt coolant fittings on this engine and um, and in order to, to check if you have a coolant system leak when you've done work like this normally in the old days we would just we would get done with the job put the whole car together one of the last things we would do is fill the coolant, you know, just pour coolant in like you would within your radiator or bottle or what have you. The trouble is if one of these hoses has a split in it, if one of the banjo bolts didn't seal, you're not going to know it till the whole thing's put together and you're going to have, you know, coolant's not cheap. What is it, like 12, 15 bucks a gallon? You're going to have 30 something dollars worth of coolant in the motor that, hey, I got a leak and you got to take stuff apart to replace that gasket, hose, what have you. And that is a real killer. It's a time killer. It's a money killer. It's just not a good way to do it. You got to drain the coolant system, fix the problem, refill the coolant system. You're into it by then for four gallons of coolant if you're not reusing it. So they come up with this airlift, and like I was saying, it uh, it creates vacuum, like like any other vacuum tool. It blows air through this piece, which causes a vacuum to be formed on that side of it. So uh, let's uh, single-handedly let's see if we can hold this thing and. Set you guys up so I can put some vacuum to it. Now, we're going to watch. Now, I know right now we probably have no leaks because you only go to maybe 10, 10 uh, inches of mercury of vacuum. But because we got a full pole here, I know I got, a, I got no leaks. And we'll shut that off. Now, I got it sealed with the, the one-way valve. We can pull this... The vacuum fitting right out of the way and uh, as you can see it's holding vacuum if there was any leaks even just a little pinhole leak this would just slowly be be going to zero because it's letting the vacuum well letting the air into the vacuum you can see all the radiator hoses are collapsed sucked right down um, I've never had a problem I've never had anything fail from this even though there's a pretty powerful vacuum on that I mean 24 23 inches of mercury is nothing to nothing to uh, laugh at as far as vacuum goes but it's holding great so let me set you guys up again and I'll show you the second part of this now not only does this check the whole system but the system's under a vacuum, which means it can suck up fluid like a straw. So what I did is I made this old uh, R134 bulk storage tank. Uh, this is what we would use to fill our AC compressors. It just would have had non-flammable refrigerant in it at one time. Now I use it as a reservoir. I just cut a hole in it, two holes, one for the tube and 
one to fill it. It's already full, so we'll just bring it right around. This plugs into here because we're still holding our vacuum. And then what we'll do is we'll slowly, now you see the little bit of coolant in the hose, we'll slowly open the valve and we see the coolant gets sucked right in. We'll see the vacuum actually decrease. We'll open it right up full throttle. And right now the coolant system is vacuum filling. Um, everything's under vacuum. The heater core, the water pump, thermostat housing, all the hoses are all right down to 24 inches of mercury. So the coolant's going to get sucked right through the system. Uh, there's no air in here. We know there's no air in here because we just removed it. And it will fill right almost, almost totally to capacity. Whatever the system takes, it will go right to that point. He's a thirsty one. Let me just check my uh, plenty of plenty of coolant in the reservoir, and we'll start to see these coolant hoses start to regain their shape as they fill up and the vacuum gets less and less. Most. And then there it is. And you can see the bottle is actually right to full cold, which is perfect. Let's let it finish that last little bit. All right, I'd say that's about it. And that's all it is. And you just take the little tool out. Hooks up really easily to the to the coolant bottle or the radiator. You just it's just a quick little couple of rubber whatever's to fit the space and uh and yeah, just tighten up that. It, it swells up the rubber and gives you a nice seal. And as you can see, we got a nice full coolant system. A nice full coolant system with no leaks, no air in the system, so we know it's just going to be ready to go. Now, that's a time saver. Not only is that a huge time saver just to fill the car, because now I can just walk away and know when it's done, but I didn't waste any coolant to find out if there were any leaks or not. Now, if I had a leak, if this didn't hold vacuum, what I would do is I would adapt the vacuum rig part of it here. Well, it wants to stay in the car, I guess. We'll have to pry its hands free later. But I would use the vacuum lift to uh, pump smoke into the coolant system, and smoke would blow out wherever the leak was, so you're not wasting gallons and gallons of expensive coolant and time. So, yeah, air lift, highly recommended. All right, guys, I got to... Uh, we got a little past 10. I want to be out of here in about an hour or so. So uh, I'm going to keep cranking into it and let's uh, let's get this old girl out of the cab. Together. Get everything all buttoned up except I left the uh, I left the ignition module out. Um, one thing I want to recommend if you ever take a lot of a motor apart or you ever take any part of the oiling system of a motor apart before you start the motor, you want to crank it for a little while just to make sure that oil pump primes up and gets oil up to the top. And uh, speaking of oil, I wanted to put some fresh oil in this thing, and I come into another problem I didn't even know I had. That there would be the threads of a Healy coil, and that would be one hella stripped out drain plug bolt. Luckily though, um, we have a selection of drain plug bolts, and I've got this, uh, this is actually for putting Healy coils in. I just uh, tapped it to that size. We had a drain plug that was exactly that size, and it went in great kind of one of those little things that gets you towards the end so uh yeah why don't we uh give about 10 seconds of crank time on this thing let me uh sounds good battery's a little low i think that's going to be it for the the prime i'm gonna i'm gonna just uh go out and say i did prime it a minute before i uh put you guys on just to make sure nothing was going to fall apart but um Hopefully I didn't run that battery down, just snap that back on, I can bolt that on after. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to put the jump back on it. Like I said, I, I cranked it a little bit already and I think I killed the battery, so uh, why don't you guys hold on a second, we'll get the pack on it. Alright, let's try this again. Please start. I want to be done with this. No check engine lights. Got a little high idle. That's all right. Might be a little vacuum leak, but uh, yeah, there it is. 
It lives, it lives, it lives. No, uh, no smoke out the tailpipe like there was, no steam. That's a good sign, good sign. Well, all right, guys, I gotta get this thing uh, off the lift. Uh, get all that oil burning off. I'm actually gonna shut this thing down for now. I don't wanna smoke out the shop before I get out of here. But yeah, there it is. Saab 95 head gasket replacement. Done, done, done. This is all just all the old oil we put on everything, all the, the lube. Is there any leaks underneath? Got no puddles underneath. Coolant's full. Awesome guys, awesome. All right, I gotta, uh, I gotta get this place cleaned up. I gotta get back in the, back on the old holiday weekend. And uh, until next time, guys, I just want to shout out to uh, Musty One. Thank you very much for all the help. That was big. Um, I probably wouldn't have gotten this done as easily, or it probably wouldn't be done right this minute, if uh, if you didn't come when you didn't help out. Um, Andrew from Driven Hard, you guys should check him out on his channel. Try to uh, give him some encouragement to show you all the cool stuff he's got. And uh, yeah, thanks again everybody for watching. And until next time, keep it out of the cabbage.